Hello guys and welcome to another video. So I've been promising you guys for a long time that I would do an updated fish room of what I've got. So this is an updated fish room tour. I've waited till night time because the, the fish tanks really do pop at night time with the light. So we're going to start off in the living room where my table aquarium is. So we're going to go in there and have a look at that. And like I say, at night time, this, this, this tank's absolutely gorgeous. Especially nice to uh, have a couple of drinks with the missus and watch a movie. And like I say, in this aquarium table, we have goldfish, fancy goldfish, black moors, your common comets. Uh, and then we have a few white cloud minnows. As you can see over there, there's a few white cloud minnows in there. Uh, and this is just an absolutely awesome tank to have in the living room. Maintenance on this, I do it once a week. Change the filter out, do a water change. And all these guys are fed on pellets and blood worms. We do have this spawning mop in there. Uh, we've yet to have any eggs laid on that, but that's just in there in case we get any spawns. So moving on from that, we're going to the kitchen. Uh, and there's only one tank in the kitchen, which is where the baby convicts are. And in this tank, we have over a hundred easy baby convicts. It's better to see it through the side. And these fish are really, really easy to breed. We've actually got a young pair down here. This is a female. And she's laid some eggs in that corner that she's guarding. Uh, and I can't believe that we have a hundred fish in the tank. That we've actually got a, this pair right here. They've got a male and female guarding this corner with the eggs. So we're going to have some new arrivals soon. And like I said, this same again, this gets a water change uh, every three to five days because there's a lot of fish in here just to make sure they are all healthy. And these guys are fed on baby brine shrimp and a bit of discus tetra pro. Coming into what's supposed to be the kitchen, uh, we're going to get to the big tank in a moment. I have my adult group of emerald corridors uh, we've yet to have a spawn out of these guys i'm not sure if i've only got one sex uh, but this tells me about the size of this female that we definitely have male and female but i've yet to have any spawns out of these uh, i do constant water changes to bring the temperature down to get them into spawning but not being successful yet with the emerald corridors but these guys are just well they're just a stunning little group and absolutely adore them. Moving on to the next tank. We have some Neo Caridina Blue Dream Shrimps. Uh, and there's about 18 here. And these guys are just scavengers. And there's loads of little babies in here. There's one right there. Little baby shrimp. So these guys are constantly breeding. And these guys are just fed on uh, snowflake pellets. Uh, one every other day. Uh, also a bit of, sometimes a bit of prone meat. So like I said, I put that in this morning and by tomorrow I will take that out if they don't eat it just to make they sure the water doesn't foul. Coming over to the new rack. So this wasn't here the last time I did an update. So this is new. Over in this one, I don't have anything yet, but I plan to get a breeding pair of, uh, well the breeding group have like common plecos, albino plecos, so that's empty at the moment. We've got two live bears in here, but I'm not sure what the name are. These were sold to me a while back. I did give some away, uh, but these are, are, are quite a rare live breeder and I've yet to have any thrive. So I'm not sure if these are both female. They both look female to me uh, and we've had nothing happen out of those. We've got some Cabensis over here, and this is a nice female, and she's actually got Fry in the tank with her. You see those little dots behind her, uh, the males up there. 
on these guys I've got about probably 30 to 40 fry in that tank with him uh, once every month or so I will take the, the pair out because these are constantly good breeders for me uh, when we get to the shed in a bit I will show you uh, the other young that they've had uh, coming down we've got uh, albino corridors now these did uh, leave a clutch of eggs about two days ago uh, which are in the room which I'll show you guys in a bit so the albinos have bred for the first time uh, we've got some false jubilee there's only two of those in there I haven't got a, a big group of those but this tank's mainly just albino corridors and they bred for the first time they were there in here we have the peppered uh, corridors and these I've bred before uh, once but I only got a really small clutch where it only gave me like two babies out of it it just weren't worth recording uh, the other corridors are the orange the orange corridors there's about 10 of those in there with the peppers and then as you guys know I had a really good spawn last time with the bronze corridors uh, and this this group's always done well for me in my other group uh, where they spawned last time, we got over a hundred fry, and that were absolutely amazing. Rollo's come to say hello. Rollo, say hello. Say hello. <laughs> uh, down below, we've got some orange. No, no, sorry, yellow, goldback shrimps. There's about 35 in here. These are really hard to see. There's actually a buried one right there. So these are, I've only had these for about three weeks. So we're waiting for these to breed and give us a good colony. Moving on to the next tank, I tried a bare bottom shrimp tank to see how it goes. Uh, and these are black, black shrimp, black rose shrimp. There's about 10 in there. And then yet again, we're just waiting for these colonies to grow out, uh, feeding them every other day, see if we can get a good colony going. And then in this last tank, at the bottom we've got a uh, snow white shrimps and again we've got about 10 of those and we've gone bottomless again like I say I'm just experimenting with the shrimps uh, we have got a buried female in there somewhere I saw this morning uh, so there's 10 in there uh, so they'll be for sale soon coming up to the side of that rack we've got live bearers and at the top we've got mollies and mollies are always really good breeders they're a common fish in the hobby people want mollies all the time uh, and there's there is some babies in there there's one at the back right there there's one right there there's babies all over this uh, green oxygenating plant at the top moving down guppies again another uh, hobby favorite because they're quite easy to breed uh, so we've got loads and loads of guppies in here and like I said these are probably the easiest, one of the easiest fish to breed in the hobby. Just put a male and female together and they'll do all the business for you and then you'll get loads. As you can see there's lots of little dots in there, loads of fry in there. Coming down to the bottom, platies and we've got red, blue uh, and orange platies in there and they're just absolutely amazing. These are not as easy to breed. Well, they are easy to breed, but they, they don't breed as fast as guppies and mollies. These guys take more time, but they are really, really easy to breed. And again, you can have these in cold water or tropical water. So these make the hobbyist probably one of the first choices because you don't, you don't have to have a heater in, but I do to make sure they breed a little bit quicker. But for the first time, I just want to put an air pump in and let the tank cycle. A platy fish is definitely one of the first I would recommend a hobbyist to get into because they're really easy to look after. So coming over to the seven foot tank, uh, as you guys know, I've got the Asian R1. It's just doing absolutely amazing. And I absolutely love this fish. It was an expensive fish for the channel uh, but it just has some personality and it does get grumpy on uh, <laughs> and I'm absolutely in love with Asian Arwana uh, as you can notice we haven't got the Oscars anymore 
Now, uh, a week after I put the arowana in, I noticed there was a bit of tension between the arowana and the Oscars. Uh, either the arowana would pet the Oscars or the Oscars would pet the arowana, and it's just with how much this fish is worth, uh, and with I don't want any sickness in this tank or stress. I actually rehomed the Oscars to a lady who had an indoor pond, an absolutely massive indoor pond where she had Oscars in already. So they went to that lady. Uh, very sad to see them go because I absolutely love the Oscars, but they went to a good home. Uh, and it's better to sometimes rehome a fish than it is to keep it and get illness in your tank or perhaps maybe even lose a fish because you don't want to let it go. I would rather let it go to a good home than it die in my care. Uh, we have the Motoro Stingray. This is a male. And like I said, we are going to try and breed these guys in the future. We are going to try and get a female for this guy. Maybe get some spawning going. He did suffer uh, a, a little minor uh, burn from the heater. And we've yet, we did correct that problem with a heater guard. Uh, and like I said, this, this guy now is now doing great. We do, we do water changes every every second day to make sure all the ammonia and nitri nitrates are down to where they're supposed to be. Uh, but like I say, no one ever told me, because I'm quite new to stingrays, that when you get a stingray to put a heater guard on because it burns. Uh, so that is on my bad that I did not know that. But like I said, the burn has healed up. It's all closed up now. And like I said, through the time, uh, it keeps on eating and uh, being healthy that should heal up fine but like I said the, the shop owner did not tell me about that and I didn't know about that so that's a bad, not my bad on my part but we are where we are with that we do have a fire eel in the corner who likes to hide and the Asian L1 is just like hey hey I'm supposed to be the star of this show what are you doing get your attention on me wait a minute so we do have the fire eel and like I say, that's just in the corner right there. It mainly comes out at night time for food. Uh, and he's just chilling in the corner right there. So then now we go out into the conservatory. Oh yeah, we're not finished yet. We have this, I have this little goldfish ball. And there's absolutely nothing in here. I'll actually turn the light on. So there's no, there's no fish in this tank. Uh, what it is, I just let the algae bloom in this tank. Uh, and I do feed this to the shrimps uh, so I just literally come in with a hand take some algae off and the shrimps actually go crazy for it uh, like I said, no, I won't keep fishing this tank because it's just algae on it's just too bad but uh, it wouldn't affect the fish anyway to be honest with you but like I said, I just use this to grow, grow the algae and feed the shrimps moving on to the 240 litre tank uh, what if I have odds and sods of little platy babies, uh, molly babies and uh, little guppy babies and we do have a lot of the uh, bronze corridoras from the last spawn and as you can see there's there's quite a lot of baby, well they're quite adults now, they're pretty much young adults now these uh, bronze corridoras uh, and there's quite a lot in there and like I said they did absolutely amazing moving over to the next tank we have nothing in this tank, uh, but this is where the eggs are from the uh, albino corridoras. As you can see, they're, they're quite they're, they're right there. Uh, some has, some have gone uh, fungus uh, as to be expected, uh, but there is some that's hatched. There's one right there underneath the uh, beaker. And I'll put the beaker in like a a, a live uh, pregnancy box. Uh, like I said, there is little fry underneath i actually counted there's one right there look just underneath my fingernail uh, i actually counted there's six at the moment if any more don't hatch by the end of tomorrow i will take these uh, bad eggs out and uh, raise the fry but what it is is uh, on the first spawns and all the bad anyway i didn't have any methylene blue on hand because i had to use it for another project uh, so it is what it is with that uh, but we did get like five or six if they all make it up to now um, and that's great because like I say that, that means that we've definitely got a breeding group of albino corridors 
Now moving over to this tank, we just have some Danios in here uh, and uh, a few Reminos. Now this tank gets the sun every day. Uh, like I say, we're in the conservatory right now and the sun hits this tank every single day. It's not the best tank aesthetically, but the water changes are done in this tank like every other tank. But we do get green water in this tank. Uh, but the fish are looked after in this tank, but it doesn't look great because the sun hits it every single day. I do need to get a UV filter on this to fix that problem, and then we won't have green water on this tank anymore. Coming over into the corner, we have the barb tank, and in here we have rosy barbs, golden barbs, tiger barbs, some green barbs, and uh, like I said, this is the, this is the barb tank. I'm going to try and spawn these guys. Like I say, there's a nice, nice female right there that's um, ready to go. Like I say, I'm going to try and spawn these guys and probably do that in a video for you guys down the line. Uh, there are a couple of uh, panda corridors in here. Like I say, there's a nice Jubilee one there. And that'll be a, a further project down the line. Moving over to this wreck. We have, remember the, the video where I had, I had like 10 actual eggs? Well, two of those guys actually made it uh, and we actually upgraded the tank. They actually, they actually came out of this one and we actually put them into a bigger tank for now. As they grow, we'll have to move on to another tank. But there's, like, there's just two absolutely cute axolotls in here. Uh, and these guys are feeding on prawns, blood worms, and a bit of pellets. And uh, like I said, we've got an albino one and a kind of like wildly black one. Moving down to the bottom, we have the white pearl better, uh, and then we have Toby down here. Like I say, they're just doing absolutely great. We're doing this to get a third one over here, but we don't have a third better yet. And these guys have literally just been fed about five minutes ago. Do need to fix this light because I do have a light that's not working properly. It is flickering, uh, and Toby don't like that. So we are going to get that fixed via Toby probably next week. Uh, like I say, that's the betters. I wouldn't mind getting like a, a red better or a blue better. Uh, just to finish that tree off nicely. Moving on into the shed. This is the last room now. These two wooden tanks, there's nothing in yet. So that's the sub-project ready to come. Over here, we have the sword tails and koi sword tails. Uh, we have some green dragon plecos in here as well. And like I said, these are, these are just the live bearer. There's no bear, there's no babies in this tank because pretty much as they give birth, people want them straight away. Uh, and like I say, it just comes, like I say, we're working with live animals, you're working on demand of when you can provide them. Down here we have the red cherry shrimps. And like I say, these are Neo Corridina again. And like I say, if you're gonna get into shrimps, this is the first one that I would recommend you get because they're the cheapest. Uh, like I said, a bit of algae there, absolutely love it. And um, with absolutely loads and loads of shrimps in here. Uh, and again, if you keep them healthy and feed them every other day, you're going to get a nice colony. Down below, that tank's got nothing in it yet. So coming up onto the next rack into the shed, we have the last batch of the Cabensis fry. Uh, and these guys are absolutely uh, coming along now. These guys are fed on baby brine shrimp every other day. Uh, and then a bit of flake, uh, like brine shrimp and then a bit of flake. Brine, so I do have to try and vary up the diet. These guys are coming on really, really nice now. Uh, this tank, we have three gold laser corridors. We did have ten, but I didn't do really well with these guys to be honest with you, and I did lose quite a lot. I do believe I've got uh, a female and two males left, so I put the spawning, spawning brush in there to try and get a spawn. Uh, so yeah, we've got three of those left. Uh, I don't know where a platy's come from, but there we go. <laughs> I don't know how a platy's got in here. Probably transferred it from the net by accident as a youngster. Down here we have a breeding group of convicts, which are, these are the parents of the ones in the kitchen. Uh, and these was nicely donated to me 
by a lovely couple that didn't live too far from me. Uh, so that's the male right there, the big one, and then the females right there. Uh, these are, like I said, these were nicely donated to me, and these guys will pretty much have eggs like every every three to four weeks. Uh, and like I say, they like guppies. These guys, they, they're egg layers, and as long as you have <laughs> a community tank where they can live, as you saw in the kitchen. Uh, they're pretty much laying in there already, and they are really easy to, to care for. Uh, and yeah, you just want to give them a little care or something generally, and they'll go and spawn in there. Over to the next tank, we have uh, Daniel, Zebra Daniel Fry. And uh, there's like 100 Zebra Daniel Fry. These are really easy to breed. You literally just get a little, little, little metal mesh, uh, put the adults in over the top. And generally within 48 hours, the female and the male, will, the eggs will be at the bottom. You've got to make sure they separate the parents. And then uh, two to three days after, uh, with a good temperature of course, you'll have loads and loads of Daniel Fry, they're really easy to breed. And then down at the bottom, last tank, I have Angel Fish. Uh, and I've had these guys now, probably coming up to a year now. Uh, and I'm just waiting for these guys to pair off. And generally, when I I put a spawn in, corn in there, I'm waiting for these guys to pair off, start to show some aggression, territorial, and then I'll know which are the pairs. Uh, and then we'll be able to start breeding angelfish. So, there you go, guys. That's an updated tour of what I'm currently keeping. I do apologise, it's took me so long to do it. Uh, I know many people have requested that I actually do it uh, and I put it off and I do apologise for that. As you can see, I've still got many spare tanks that I'm not using so we can get some more breeding projects on the go. Uh, the barbs, the angels. Uh, I do want to try and breed the stingrays but I need to try and get a female motor or stingray for that. Uh, and yeah, come along and join, for the, join me for the journey guys. Uh, because I do, I do love doing this hobby. I know many of you guys do enjoy doing the hobby. Uh, and it's just absolutely amazing to see you guys when you come around. And the response I get when you guys pick up some fish is absolutely amazing. Generally, it's you're a nutter or, <laughs> or it's uh, absolutely, wow, I wish I could do this at my place, but my missus won't let me. You generally got to have a very understanding missus to do something like this. Uh, so if you've got one tank and you want more, try and work on your missus or your partner. Uh, <laughs> and like I said guys, thanks for watching the video, thanks for all the likes, comments, subscribes, uh, I'll keep on going, I'll keep on making these videos as regular as I can, uh, and thank you for being here, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, thanks for watching.